Section 2, the difference between imprisonment and freedom. This is a very important, somewhat difficult concept for the ego-oriented mind. Yes. Right here, Barry. Yeah, sorry, you got to, so we can really hear you. And you profile. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, now you're on I the usually am very active in groups. I've been to many groups, meditation groups and all that. And I uh, noticed that during the first segment, uh, we only had about five minutes to ask questions. Right. So uh, we, what I would like is, I used to be a high school teacher, and I know a good lesson is when the teacher doesn't dominate the lesson, but allows uh, the students to speak up. Um, could we have more time to ask questions? No. <laughs> well, I spoke my mind. Barry, uh, we are at this point just a little beyond a third of the way through the class. So as the day progresses, there'll be more and more and more time to do that, okay? Well, I just want to try to get to some of the basics. An assistant principal wouldn't give you a satisfactory <laughs> observation. I am your assistant principal. Oh. <laughs> Look at there. An assistant principal just said it was okay. How can he get a, a satisfactory observation when he dominates the lesson by lecturing? You mean the old book and book? Barry. I think you're being outvoted. Yeah. I think Barry missed That doesn't mean I'm wrong. I think I'm you stuck in after I said that, <laughs> that I was going to try to have a little bit more time to talk in the beginning. It will be more. I will definitely leave more time at the end of this section, and then especially at the end of the, after or the second break. Okay. And, and as I said, I'm going to ask you some questions in here too, which I just haven't got to yet. But any part of my well, that's what I was waiting for. All right. You weren't here in the beginning, where I said that. Uh, well, were you? Were, I guess you were in the beginning. No, he was here. You just weren't paying attention. <laughs> I was paying attention, but I was thinking about things that I would like to know, but I didn't quite know how... Uh, Anytime you want to ask a question, ask a question, but not now. <laughs> you said that at the beginning of the... Uh... Let's try to get a little bit further into the chapter, and then we'll have some questions, okay. Page four <laughs> out of 12. We'll never get through all 12. We never, we never succeeded this. Um, so, I'm reading from uh, section two. There is a rationale for choice. Only one teacher knows what your reality is. If learning to remove the blocks, to, there are the obstacles rather. If learning to remove the obstacles to that knowledge is the purpose of the curriculum, you must learn it of him. So this is, let's talk about this. This is really the, it says on the first page of the course that the purpose of the course is to help us to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So the question then becomes one of what are the blocks? And actually the blocks are pretty obvious if you want to pay attention to them. Right? You know where you get, uh, here's a, a, one good way to notice blocks would be to take the manual for teachers of the course and it describes 10 characteristics of a teacher of God, right? And if we kind of go down and just sort of look at these 10 characteristics, I won't go through all of these. Uh, <laughs> but like, let's say, number two is honesty. All right, so honesty, dishonesty would be a block, right? Because the, the only way we, is to have perfect honesty, actually. So that there's nothing that's keeping us. There's no hidden agendas, no secrets. So if, I, if my life is filled up with a lot of dishonesty, that's a place where I'm blocked. So I want to look at wherever it is that I'm blocked. And this has to do with communication, in relationships, uh, et cetera. Why, do I, why would I want to hide something? Right, so if I feel that I am hiding, that's a block. 
that's a block to communication. This is a lot about communication coming up in this chapter, right? And and to being and being really truly connected with each other. As I go on, to tolerance. So is there any where am I being in, intolerant? You know, wh why, if I see intolerance coming up, I, I, then that's a block. I want to look at the block. Um, gentleness would be simply the opposite. It'd be the opposite of all these. So when I'm, I'm not being gentle, when I'm <laughs> not being kind, when the opportunity presents itself, you could continue this with each one of these. Right? So just look, and this is a good way to, to tell when you're when you're blocked. There's others when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling like things aren't working, then you want to kind of look at it. When you get angry, that's a really good one to look at because there's some kind of block that's going on there. Otherwise, you wouldn't be angry right now. Right? So look at it. This, should, this is all about peace, right? It says so. That's the first line in this chapter. This is, uh, it's about peace is the goal of this course. So if there's anything that's blocking me from experiencing peace, where do I do not feel peaceful? If I don't feel peaceful around something, then I want to look at where, how I'm blocked on that, going further with this same passage. Ken, I just want to point out that the number one characteristic for God's teachers is trust. trust right. So the biggest obstacle to peace would be doubt. Right. Uh, right. Doubt. 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 The biggest obstacle, well, if the, the first characteristic of a teacher of God is trust. So the biggest obstacle in that sense would be doubt. Right. Well, and, and what you're trusting is that you're trusting <coughs> that this is all true, that there really is a God, and that God really does have your best interest at heart, and that if you just follow, do what he's asking you to do, everything's going to work out wonderfully, but you've got to do what you're being asked to do. That's, the, that's, where, this, this, that's where this chapter is taking you, this section is taking us. Now let me go on with this. The ego does not know what it is trying to teach. It's trying to teach you what you are without knowing what you are because the, the, the ego doesn't know. I mean, it, do, it doesn't have an answer. Right? It is expert only in confusion. It does not understand anything else. As a teacher, then the ego is totally confused and totally confusing. Even if you could disregard the Holy Spirit entirely, which is impossible, you could still learn nothing from the ego because the ego knows nothing. Keep in mind that not only does the ego know nothing, and this, is, this seems difficult, but <clears throat> there is no ego. <laughs> it not only knows nothing, it is nothing. It, it is nothing and it knows nothing. That's why it's an illusion. It looks like this big thing that really gets a hold of us and that, that dominates our lives and controls things, and yet it's nothing at all. That's why when you wake up, as I said before, what do you lose when you lose an illusion? Nothing. Right. <laughs> because there's nothing to lose, right? That's why, that's what, in Rod's description here, of that prayer, that he said that prayer was really a, a prayer about, you know, you're going to leave this life and all of its troubles and all of its problems, and you won't even remember this, Right? Because it's it was nothing. I mean, you won't remember I any of the the junk and the sorrows and the guilts and the, that because that's that's just ego thinking, well, it right? It, it never happened. Actually, it literally never happened, except in a fantasy inside your mind that only it lasted in the course of this very late an instant. In fact, is it just an, an instant? I, you'll go home. <laughs> I mean, in, my, in the mind that you can go home, right? Uh, let's see what I, I'm not keeping up with, I'm doing the workbook, but I'm, this, I'm not in sync with the year. I did 300 yesterday, and 300 is only an instant does the world endure. Only an instant does the world endure. It's like only an instant does a dream endure, right? A fantasy endure an illusion endure, and then it's gone. And when it's really gone, it's really gone. It's just like last night's dream. Everybody here had some dreams last night, and the time you were dreaming, you thought they were happening, but they actually were nothing, and you can't remember it now. <laughs> 
Because the only thing you can really remember, ultimately, is home. God, truth, reality, love. That's the only thing that's worth remembering, and that's the only thing that God's trying to get you to, to remember. That's why it's about waking up. Going a little further with this. Um, the ego cannot teach you anything as long as your will is free because you will not listen to it. Now, we're beginning to get into an interesting idea here. Let me go a little bit further before I talk about it. Uh, on down on four on the left. It is not your will to be imprisoned because your will is free. That is why the ego is the denial of free will. Your will and God's cannot be out of accord because they are one. And then the bottom piece. We have said that the Holy Spirit teaches you the difference between pain and joy. This is the same as saying he teaches you the difference between imprisonment and freedom. You cannot make this distinction without him because you have taught yourself that imprisonment is freedom. So there's a lot of ways that we teach ourselves that imprisonment is freedom. Take, for example, most obvious examples would be like an addiction. All right, so I have, the, I have this right to make this choice to drink this drink or do this drug or whatever, whatever that then I, I'm, this is my free choice. I can do this freely, and you can do it freely, but now you're in prison. Yeah. So now, and, you, and now you think you have no choice. <laughs> you always have choice. You're always a choice. Every single second, every single moment, every single day, every, every single one of us are a choice. So it's simply a matter of, of choosing to, to do it right. All right? So the, the ego, for example, buys into power, and he thinks there's freedom and power, and then it's... It, power corrupts and you know there's no freedom there or we think that there's freedom in some sort of attack and there's no freedom there it's this this constant process one more passage over here when you have learned that your will is God's now this is very important your will is God's there is no difference between your will and God's will it's the there's only one will you could no more will to be without him than he could will to be without you this is freedom and this is joy, right? And actually, I think what we find, you know, here in this, when I was reading Rod's description, you know, it's really a description of an experience where the wills get back in touch. You know, it's, it's really get connected once again. So, and then, you know, he's, he says he woke up the next morning and feeling incredible peace and joy, right? Because he allowed, he allowed this to happen. He, and he allowed it to happen by stepping out of the way. He says, I stepped out of the way and let this happen. And whenever any of us experience, when we, we just let love happen, for example, you step out of the way and you let love happen under whatever <coughs> circumstances you allow for that. Sometimes maybe when you're writing, especially if it's inspired writing, you will feel like you have stepped out of the way and something else uh, worked through you. Or maybe in your counseling and something you step out of the way and the right words come through in the, in the counseling. Right? It's just get out of the way is the whole thing, right? And then reading that a little further down, all right? Now here's where this hymn starts. It starts <clears throat> in uh, section two, paragraph seven. I said there was a hymn, and it continues through section six of this chapter. And I'm just gonna read you this next little bit. Sort of think of this as a kind of a hymn that Jesus is singing. When I said all power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his, this is what I meant. The will of God is without limit and all power and glory lie within it. It's boundless in strength and love and in peace. It has no boundaries because it is extension, is unlimited and it encompasses all things because it created all things. By creating all things, it made them part of itself. You are the will of God because that is how you were created. Because your creator creates only like himself, you are like him. You are part of him who is all power and glory and are therefore as unlimited as he is. You see this, there's this kind of song quality about this as there is throughout this whole next, uh, next section. And let's go to page five at the top. 
so you, you all know that I have a, a, a book coming out in May called uh, Perfect ha Lesson 101, Perfect Happiness. And this is what this is about. It's really about how you were created perfect, not your body, <laughs> not, not, not what's happening in space time. But as a spirit, as a, a connection with God, you can't help but be perfect. You are a child of God. A child of God has to be perfect. It's not, it's not possible not to be perfect. But I have this dream that I'm not. I have this illusion that I'm not. I have this ego which tells me that, that I'm actually unworthy, that there's nothing perfect about me at all. This is a wonderful memory to get back to the truth of this, right? Let me read this. To fulfill the will of God perfectly is the only joy and the only peace that can be fully known because of the only function that can be fully experienced. When this is accomplished, then there is no other experience. Yet the wish for other experience will block its accomplishment because God's will cannot be forced upon you, being an experience of total willingness. So it's this, here's the strange paradox. The paradox is that you have free will, but the only free, the free will is that you do what God would have you do, and that's, that's the freedom. That's the paradox. The paradox is the ego doesn't understand that. The ego says, thank you very much, God, I'm going to do it myself. And then goes and tries to do it its own way and always runs into trouble and always fails. It has to fail it ha because it has a built-in implode in it. It can't possibly succeed, again, because it's an illusion. An illusion's an illusion. It's an illusion. Going down to the bottom of uh, uh, four, I mean five on the left. The goal of the curriculum, regardless of the teacher you choose, is know thyself. There is nothing else to seek. Everyone is looking for himself and for the power and the glory he thinks he has lost. Isn't that interesting? You, you, that you think that, you're, that we're always looking for something. There's always this, this missing element. That we're always, and, but it's there. And then on the top of five on the right. Freedom cannot be learned in tyranny of any kind. And the perfect equality of all of God's sons cannot be recognized through the dom dom dominion of one mind over another. God's sons are equal in will, being all the will of their father. This is the only lesson I came to teach. Right? You have this freedom. And then one more section, and we'll just stop and talk. Whenever you are with a brother, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. Think about that. Whenever, under any circumstance, under any moment, he will respond either with pain or with joy, depending on which teacher you are following. He will be imprisoned or released according to your decision, and so will you. Never forget your responsibility to him because it's your responsibility to yourself. Give him his place in the kingdom and yours will, you will have yours as well. This is about doing unto others as we would have others do unto us once again. Right? Just, so there's no one that we can look at and, and think that we're any better than or vice versa. <laughs> There's nobody that we can look at and think that they're really somehow or another better than us. All right. all absolutely, totally equal. All right. uh, uh, this is a really important part of the course because the, again, what the course is all, it's all about relationship. And it's all about healing every single relationship. It's the only way to get into heaven. I mean, the only way to get into heaven is, <coughs> did I tell you about, I think I did, about Bill, Thetford's death. Uh, I guess some are saying yes, and some are, I did. Well, anyhow, the, the, I'm not going to tell the story, but I'll just tell the last piece of it. The last piece of it is the day before he died, he started dancing around and clicking his fingers and going, all my relationships feel so wonderfully healed and whole. Isn't that interesting to do that the day before you die, to start dancing around and clicking your fingers and say, all my relationships feel so wonderfully healed and whole? I think there's a lot of similarity between what happened with Ken and what happened with Bill. And I think it's exciting that our two first teachers of the course, so to speak, I mean, those who really took it seriously, got it and understood it and practiced it, had this experience of, of completion before they decided to let these 
let this body thing go. Right? All right, let's go a little bit further and then we'll have some, whatever you want to talk about, you can raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, there's a place I want to get to real quick. Let me see if I can get to it. Um, I want to raise a question for you. I want let's, uh, let's jump for a second. Jump to nine. We'll maybe come back here. But this is still on the same topic. On the left-hand side, when you think you are unwilling to will with God, you are not thinking. Now that would be... When you think you are unwilling to will with God, you are not thinking. God's will is thought. It cannot be contradicted by thought. Will is thought. So that's... What do you think it, that, that last sentence means? Will is thought. This is worthy of discussion. And we won't ask Barry. <laughs> John? Well, one of the best... Wait, 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 turn around. Sorry. Got to make you do this, but... Where's the... Oh, there it is. One of the best definitions I've heard about for my ego is those are the thoughts that I believe. Hmm. So... If I'm believing my thoughts as compared to what the <coughs> Holy Spirit is, tr is trying to tell me, mm -hmm. then my thoughts are contradicting God's thoughts. Right. So there's the, there's the choosing mm -hmm. and the, the battle of, of the two wills. Right. And the opportunity to see both of those at all times and make that choice. Okay, good. I think there's still another dimension to this. Will is thought. Can we get this all? Are you, can you get back to Don there with that? Uh, uh, thing? To, well, to Don. Her. Yeah. This one. So what's coming up for me is um, I, I can't be separate of God. It's impossible. It, that's true. It's impossible. So, and and the way I teach this is is ideas of there isn't anything I can do that goes oh no God I like God's thinking I I had no idea she was going to do that like so let me. I, now I have to accommodate. My choices are known before I do them. And so the accommodation, I don't know if that's the right word, but, no, work. but the adjustment it has already been, it's, it's already finished, right? It's already complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I think I'm being willful and going to go do it my way, like I, how am I going to escape this? How, where, do I, where am I going to go to be separate of God? It's, my thinking, even though, because it's still an illusion. Right. So even if I'm thinking willful thoughts of separate of God, I'm still in God's plan. I'm still in God's will. Yes. So yes. That, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> that's the best I come up <laughs> That's with. good. All right, and Barry, here is, uh, let's share with Barry. A great deal of my life um, is held back by fear. Fear? Fear okay, of okay, aging, okay, sickness, yeah. and death. Right. Those I'm are in the... good health, by the way, for my age, but uh, I think about it a lot, and I feel that I w I'm not really free to be a, a better person, more at peace with myself. Okay. So what, what's the first characteristic of a teacher of God? Trust. Trust, right? So what we're doing, we're trusting that God really is in charge. Well, that yeah. I have trouble with. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I noticed. That's where the fear comes from. <laughs> right? So, the, the, so it's a matter of letting God's will be. All right? And letting God's will be. In this, the story about Rod and his patient, what happened was the guy was fearful of dying. He was having a lot of resistance to it. But then... Rod, for some reason, is given the right information to know how to say the right kind of a prayer that eats so this guy can let go. 
so that the fear isn't there anymore. He relaxes, literally, relaxes into death. And that's the most, that's beautiful because you're letting God's I, any one of us who has the experience of really trusting and letting it doesn't make any difference what's going on. My choices, my will does not have to uh, something I I see something happening that I wish wasn't happening, but I let it go. I say it's okay. I, I had an experience in. Um, 2001 with cancer and um, I'm probably not the only cancer survivor in the, in the room what I got to with that was it was okay I mean it was okay that I might die because it had spread right? so once I could get to the point where I said it's okay it was beautiful I mean, it was beautiful and I didn't ha think that I had to hold on to this body for some reason. And then it didn't matter. Once it didn't matter, it was fine. Yeah. Right? But I had to get to the point it didn't matter. Because there's nothing, literally nothing to be afraid of. Well, how did you get to that point? Trust. Well, by acceptance of the fact that this, this, this may very well be what was going to happen. And so, so okay, so, so I'm going to die. We're all going to die. I mean, we're all going to die at some point. I'm just going to go a little sooner, a little quicker than some of my other friends were. That's all. So what difference does it make if I can relax and let go? If I can relax and let go and it of an illusion, I'm free. Anybody else? Eric, right here beside you. Makes it easy. Um, I, I think we see the perfection of everything as it is hmm. um, and, uh, until we are distracted by our thoughts and um, they take us over and repetitive thought goes, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. We all know we're going to die. We all know <laughs> right. that people don't last m more than a hundred years or so-ish. Um, at that most. At that most. Um, so it, it's always about being here now. Right. And, and never about the future that I'm going to die. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's uh, I'm never in the future. I'm only ever in the now. When, when I was in the hospital and after I'd gotten the news that the cancer had spread, um, and I, I thought, well, you know, I could die, I could die. <laughs> especially if the cancer is spread, right? And I thought, okay, I'm going to die. And then I thought, okay, so what am I going to do? And I thought, well, I just have to be the most loving person. I go to the next person that walked into the room. And of course, I wasn't going to die that day. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the next person walked into the room, and the next person walked into the room, and the next person walked into the room. And that was it. Just keep living in this moment until there was no, more, no moment left anymore. And there was no fear in that. That makes sense. Yes, Lily cuts. Um, I just want to say that uh, when, before I started uh, studying the course, I had a lot of fear about a lot, lot of things, and I was attending um, a twelve-step program at the time. And almost every time, what I was sharing was, "I'm afraid of this, that, or the other." And I don't, I'm not sure if I can remember the exact turning point of when I started not being afraid of things, but. I do know that after I went through the whole thing, all, did all the lessons, did, read the whole book, um, by the end of that year, I wasn't afraid of anything. I wasn't afraid I was going to die. I wasn't afraid I was going to be destitute, and, you know, or sick or anything. And uh, I, I don't know exactly what it was. But th there was also a saying that I heard in one of the 12-step programs about... Um, I don't remember exactly how the story goes, so maybe somebody else remembers it better. I think somebody got shoved over at the edge of a cliff and caught on a... Uh, holding on. on. Onto a bush or something, right. a branch of a tree, and um, heard a voice that said, let, let go, a booming voice saying, let go, and, you know, because there was no way where to go. You couldn't climb up, you couldn't climb down. There was no, there was no other choice. The only choice was to let go. And... Um, it had a good ending. I don't remember the what it was. <laughs> that, that joke is on the very, very first page of this, of this book. And I, you're, and I haven't used it in years because it was on the first page of the book. 
with a graphic illustration. Pardon? The, the line is uh, when the guy yells out, when the voice says, let go. And then the guy says, is there anybody else there? <laughs> Alex? John, uh, in terms of what we just, uh, when, you, when you think you are willing to will with, with God, you're not thinking, would you, would you say that, that the fear of, of death is not a real thought? Yeah. And that, that uh, when you begin to see that, that it changes it completely? Of course. You're no longer... Only the ego could think that. No, because only the ego is afraid of dying. And what the Course is saying time and time again is you're not an ego. And once you see that you're they're not an ego, there's this what are you letting go of? You're letting go of nothing. You're letting go of you're letting go of an illusion. Which gets which means you get to go home again right now. You know, one of the first things that I, that kinda happened was when I said okay to death in that experience, come get me, I realized that I wasn't gonna die right then. <laughs> I mean not that day. So that was okay, and there would be another day, and another day, and another day, until the day. So it kind of worked. <laughs> For some reason, I lived. Michael. I think that uh, most of our thought is of the ego. Yes. It's very little creative thought that we ever have. And, and when we're at peace, perfect peace, there's no thought. There's no need for thought. Right. I think what got me to it at that point was I could put, put, put it up against the wall. That's kind of when you, when you get put up against the wall and then you have to see the choice, then you can make the choice. Because most of the time, you're right, most of the time that's not what we're thinking at all. And most of the time we're thinking about whatever our problems are that we've got in the world. All right. Tony, did you want to share something yeah. too? Okay, this is uh, Tony uh, Paternini. Yeah, Paternini. In okay. September of 2012, I retired from the UN after 30 years. And I did not realize that retirement was a stressful thing. <laughs> but I found myself otherwise feeling fine and then suddenly thinking I was having a heart attack. I was having pain in my chest, going down my arms, and went to the hospital emergency once and it went away and I came back home. And it happened again and this time I checked in, went to the room, checked in, and they said, your heart is fine. And I shared this with a bunch of friends because it was really frightening. And a friend who had been treated for uh, anxiety attacks Mm -hmm. privately got in touch with me. And uh, just to cut to the ending, there's an Australian doctor, I don't think she's still alive, who, is the, who was the preeminent expert on this. And in listening to a few of her talks, she said, if you can't remember any of this that I'm telling you in her teaching, just whenever you feel the attack coming on, just repeat to yourself, loosen and accept. Loosen. Loosen, like loosen yeah, whatever's going on in the go, body. Yeah and yeah. accept that mm. this is what's going on. Huh. And so a week or so later, I was sitting on the sofa watching TV, feeling fine, and suddenly there was a pain in my chest, and it started going down my arm, and it was like, I said, hold on a second, and I went into the bathroom and just sat on the seat, <coughs> I will close the seat, and I, mm. and I, <laughs> okay. Either way. And I just said, I said, okay, loosen and accept. This is what's happening. I have a pain going down my arm, I have a pain in my chest, loosen. And do that, loosen, and accept. And all of a sudden it was gone. Huh. And so whenever anything even close to that has come came after afterwards, I did loosen and accept right. and it was gone. Right. But it, it was important to accept the seeming reality right. of what was happening. Right. Billy, you want to share something too? You got your hand up. Can you pass the mic over to Billy? Okay. Yeah, I just come to the thinking like the lady across the street from my mother turned 101 on Friday, you know. So she must wake up every day and say, you know, is this it? When is it going to happen? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what I'm trying to say is I guess we should all be just thinking that we're 101. What makes us think that we're guaranteed tomorrow? Because even in uh, Brandon Lee in the movie The Crow does his last interview before the movie, and he dies in that movie, but he talks about how many more moons will we see, how many, you know, everybody takes oh. for granted that we are going to be here forever, so that's my thing. Right. Okay. Um, I'd like uh, to say something. Um, um, where are you? Hi. Yes, okay. I just want to share an experience yes, I had. In 2006, I was um, heading home uh, from 
helping my brother move to Pennsylvania and all of a sudden I was going up this hill and this car came around the corner in my lane and there was nowhere to go so mm. it was like a uh, head-on collision was imminent and I remember saying uh oh <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then I literally felt well okay and I was okay with it huh. and then yeah. like you know the crash happened and I literally felt my body return you know after the airbags you know mm -hmm. went back and mm -hmm. and I was fine mm -hmm. I mean the guy who hit me had died instantly oh my gosh and I was fine <laughs> I had like a little crack in my sternum that was it right but I l remember just feeling well okay but, uh, okay that's okay this is the moment this this is it that's yeah. okay yeah, and, okay. and I just wasn't scared but that's the whole thing. The whole thing is just is being able to say it's okay. This is this is okay. This is, and keep in mind as long as we're talking about death, um, the course is that the time is decided already. Uh, and not only is the time decided already, you pick the time. So if the time is decided already and you pick the time, so what's the big deal? You, you just got what you asked for. <laughs> I mean that in a nice way. I don't mean it <laughs> negatively. Uh, Christian, then we'll go over to this yeah, side. I right? just want to know if we can change the time. Change the time? Yeah. The time of our death. Uh, well, yeah. I have no time for that question. <laughs> Let's go over here to uh, Terrence. You want to take this mic here? Yeah, yeah, how did you guys to sit together? I don't know. Oh, they both have the same last name. Uh, strange. Stay standing. Stay standing. So, um, I just actually wanted to get back to the, the question that you originally asked us, which is... Okay, good. Yeah, I'm not quite done with it either. Will is, will is thought. Yeah. Will is thought. And um, the idea that keeps popping in my head is that thought compels, and nothing happens without thought. Um, all the things you create, right. all the things that you think, do, whatever... Uh, is preceded, of course, by thought. And that that is it. If that is the case, then that is it. That is all. And if your thought is right thinking, then you'll be on the side of God. If not, you'll be on the side of the ego. And I feel like that's a lot of what this whole chapter talks about. Right. Then you're getting closer to where I was going with this than, than I've heard. So it really it's the same thing. The will, the, if I'm doing God's will, I mean... Notice again how Rod talks about the next morning he wakes up with this incredible sense of peace because he was per he was doing God's will. It was the, the synchronization was there. And that's possible for everyone at any time, but you've got to be willing to do it. You know, to, to get out to step out of the way so that that kind of experience can happen. These, these are these holy instances that the Course talks about. They can, and the thing is to have this happen more and more and more and more and more so that it becomes a natural state, so that we're just naturally thinking in line with the mind of God. And there's not a lot of gravity of ego pulling us back down again. Uh, okay. Talk into the mic. Can I share that passage? Yes, please. I wanted to comment first about the question you had. You, you commented to John that you had a lot of uh, fear about dying, and John was giving some suggestions, and then you said, how do I get there? How do I get to that point about letting go? Well, this Course in Miracles is one way. Um, you know, like John started this class, this is a Course in Miracles, a Course in teaching us on how to stop identifying with the personal self, and start identifying with the oneness of God. And so it really is only about practicing, like this is a mind training. So we start with the lessons in this course. That's one way of how, how do you get there. That's, that, this is one way of how do you get there. And about the will of God, this, there's a statement at the end. I was reading last night um, at the end of chapter 30 and came across a passage of the definition of salvation that made me cry. I mean, it, it, I, just, I just put the book down and started crying for joy. And I haven't cried in reading the Course for a couple years. But it's this one paragraph, and I wanted to share it with you, because this is a way to let go of, the, of all your fear. It says, salvation is a paradox indeed. What could it be except a happy dream? It asks you but that you forgive all things that, you, that no one ever did, 
to overlook what is not there and not to look upon the unreal as reality. You are but asked to let your will be done and seek no longer for the things that you do not want. And you are asked to let yourself be free of all the dreams of what you never were and seek no more to substitute the strength of idle wishes for the will of God. That last sentence says it all. It says, and you are asked to let yourself be free of all the dreams of what you never were. You never were a body, so you never can die. So we're being asked to let go of that belief that we're a personal self and that we can die. And to accept the strength of the will of God, which God's will is thought, God is love, so God's will is loving thought. You know, so to, to accept God's will, to love, love the thoughts that are truly you. One of the things when you read about, like, Anita Morjani's experience with death, uh, one of the exciting things that she said there is that um, nothing happened. <laughs> I think that's going to be the most surprising thing that happens with everybody when, you, when we let go, is that nothing happens. Now, what I mean by nothing happens is, I, I think the first thing that happens is, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> I don't mean in the body. The body's gone, but the mind is not gone. And that, you know, that's what the Course is so incredibly clear about. You can't lose your mind, except in this world. You can temporarily lose your mind, but in truth you can't lose your mind because the mind is the part of you which is, which is eternal. And it has nothing, and this is a very important, it has nothing nothing to do with the body except in so far as we temporally experience that there seems to be some sort of relationship going on in space time but in space time that's nothing either right? and I want to say something about well, in terms of what you were reading and uh, Lillicott's description of being free, free, free of fear and she said she didn't know when that happened but she's been doing a lot of studying of the course and that's not surprising at all. You know, you don't know when it happens. It's not like there's a day that it happens. I mean, sometimes somebody may have an encounter, like Tony explained, with 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 a near heart attack or something like that, and that happens. But in this case, it's just because you've been doing this long enough. You've been hanging in there long enough that this the piece of the course of this way of sort of settling in inside is, and that's. The goal of this course is peace. It says so very, very clearly. And the foundation that was set up to print the book is called the Foundation for Inner Peace. That's all that we're really concerned with. There's nothing we need to learn. We're just learning how to experience peace, which is equivalent with happiness. <laughs> if you're peaceful, you're pretty happy. <laughs> and there was another... Uh, Lynn... According to the Course, doesn't it say that when you're not thinking with God, you're not thinking at all? It does. We read that kind of a yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah that's um, so. Yeah, I'm sorry about Okay, that. it's okay, okay, but you're right. You know, um, and about thoughts preceding actions, sometimes uh, anger just comes up, especially on the subway. And, um, <laughs> you know, and it comes in a flash. And um, I guess, I guess then... I have to work harder to ask the Holy Spirit, see, let me see another, right. give me another way of seeing this. Right. But, and, and then, you know, the anger feels good in a way. It feels, mm, I'm j justified, right? But, yeah, in the long run, in the long run, I, get, I just... No, it's yeah, never, we, no, it never works in the long run. It doesn't work in the long run. Well, let's have a berry and then we're going to take our second break. Um, Too late, Barry, the bells rang. <laughs> I've learned from my own experience, not intellectualizing about things, but from my own experience, which I've been led to believe um, is what I can really go by. Experience is the best right. teacher. 
And I've had this experience of listening to a voice within me for a long time. And I've learned from my experience listening to that voice that when I listen to it, I wind up doing the right things. Right. When I ignore it, I get myself in trouble. Right. Um, is this voice within me that tells me I'm doing the right thing, is that the Holy Spirit? In terms of the Chorus, yes. And if so, uh, it seems to me that the way out of my fear is to co constantly do and listen to this voice within me. And exactly. I know uh, when I listen to it, I get a good feeling because right. that good feeling tells me that I'm doing the right thing. Right. So that's it. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good summarization. Let's take, take a 10-minute break. Good.